Samurai Warriors Spirit of Sanada is a spin-off title for the long-running Samurai Warriors franchise. Built off of Samurai Warriors 4, 4, 2, and 4 Empires, none of which I have played. My last venture into a numbered Samurai Warriors title was the second game that was released in 2006. It's been a while, but I've been updated on the changes to the series' combat design through crossover titles like Warriors Orochi, as well as its sister franchise, Dynasty Warriors. Now, for those of you that aren't aware, Musou games, or the Warriors franchise as they're more commonly known in the West, hone in on a very certain niche of action games. The story is typically rooted in history. Dynasty Warriors focuses on Chinese battles from the Three Kingdoms period, while Samurai Warriors takes place during the Sengoku era of Japanese history. You take control of an officer character, who is always a hyper-stylized version of their real-life counterpart, and slaughter hundreds of enemies in massive battles. Since I've played these games for the better half of my life, I've always wanted to cover one of them in some capacity, and the most recent entry feels like the best place to start. Here's combat, according to Samurai Warriors Spirit of Sanada. Musou games are known for their extensive rosters, and Spirit of Sanada stays true to that with an astounding 61 playable characters, plus a couple of extra officers who are aged versions of themselves, a first for the franchise. Now, despite the huge roster, all of these heroes have their own unique movesets to complement each respective character. But at their core, every officer has four types of attacks. With that in mind, let's have the game's initial protagonist, Masayuki Sanada, provide us with demonstrations of each. Normal attacks, which are done by pressing the X button. Charge attacks, for which you have to press Y after a normal attack. Masayuki has eight charge attacks, so in order to execute charge attack 5, for example, you have to press X five times and then press Y for it to trigger. Hyper attacks are done by pressing Y while you're neutral, and hyper attack finishers are what charge attacks are to normal attacks. You input Y to initiate a hyper attack and then input X to finish off your string with a flashy move. Along with these attacks, they also have special abilities that are triggered with the right bumper. Some are more interesting than others. Masayuki's special ups his damage output but reduces defense, while his son Yukimura charges up his spear before dashing straight into the fight. There's a couple more universal mechanics like rage, muso, and spirit, but let's not get ahead of ourselves just yet. So, you have 61 characters, each of whom has two separate attack strings, normals that may or may not transition into charges, and hypers that function similarly. If you know your character well enough, your strategy changes based on your circumstances. This leads to dozens of moment-to-moment -moment decisions in every encounter. You end your normal string with an early charge attack in hopes of having enough room to restart your combo, or do you commit to your string of normals for longer and execute a charge attack that's more powerful? You could forego charge attacks altogether and just finish your normal string before diving back into the fight. It's all up to you and which approach you deem most suited for the situation. It's player choice, it's player expression, and it's the pillar on which this combat system holds itself. One unique heroes is certainly a lot to take in, but this game very cleverly divides the cast into four easily distinguishable categories. Normal, Power, Hyper, and Special Attack Oriented Officers. Normal attack oriented officers like Takatora Toro have 12 normal inputs as well as 8 charge attack finishers, which have one input each. Power attack oriented officers like Ranmaru Mori have 8 normal attack inputs and 4 charge attack finishers, but those 4 charge attacks have 2 follow ups each. Hyper attack oriented officers like Mitsuhide Akechi have 8 normal attack inputs and 4 charge attack finishers, however, unlike power attack oriented officers, their charge attacks have only 2 inputs, with the 4th one having just a single one. 
Their hyper attacks, however, have 8 inputs and 7 finishers, unlike the rest of the cast that have 6 hyper inputs and just 5 finishers. The last, and unfortunately the least, are special attack oriented officers. These characters have 8 normal attack inputs and 4 charge attack finishers, each with 2 follow ups. Where the other three categories have one special skill, special attack oriented officers have two. Sadly, given that specials are very lackluster here, more often than not, these heroes are very underwhelming. There's some really great ideas here, but without a deeper level of engagement, they grow stale pretty quick. An excellent example is Kanbei Kuroda, whose weapon of choice are magical orbs. After executing the special, Kanbei acquires extra orbs. This is a drastic change to his moveset. The buff makes every attack noticeably more deadly, but mechanically, there is no depth here. It's just applying a buff before every fight unless you want to go in undergunned. Some officers have utterly useless specials like Mitsunari Ishida who can either form a protective barrier that kills the frame rate and you should never use it, or lay down traps that explode after a certain time. All in all, special attack oriented officers definitely got the short end of the stick and I hope they'll get more polished in the future. Every playable character in Samurai Warriors Spirit of Sanada has a Muso bar, this purple thing under the health bar, which when upgraded to its maximum can hold up to 3 charges. The Muso bar is expended to unleash a Muso attack, of which there's two types. The standard version, which has your character execute a loopable move before doing some cool shit and then the big exploding happens. And the second variant, which is tied to the spirit meter. Once you have at least one unit of spirit, you can go into rage mode during which your attacks are unblockable and you deal tons more damage. If you try to do your Muso attack during this time, you execute a Muso frenzy attack, which results in cooler shit and an even bigger exploding. Now, the spirit meter is used for more than just rage. In fact, spirit is perhaps the most important factor to this game's combat system, one that doesn't show itself until you've leveled up your hero and unlocked and studied their moveset. On initial glance, Warriors games don't look very challenging. You mow down hundreds of soldiers in every battle, capture the occasional base, and murder other named officers on the battlefield. Mechanically, there's not a whole lot to it. All you need is a good sense of rhythm and knowledge of your character so that you correctly apply the necessary move for the situation. At least that's what I thought before I properly studied the spirit charge mechanic. Spirit Charge is a universal move that every officer can do and it's tied to the spirit meter. To do it, you need to press the jump button right after your move connects with an enemy. Doing so will make your character cancel their move and ready for a new string of attacks without any recovery animations and it only costs about a third of your spirit bar, which is why it's important to have your rage level upgraded so you never run out of charges. There's something to be said about how stupidly broken this move is, given that it not only cancels whatever you're doing, it staggers enemies, breaks their guard, and deals damage, but these games were always about overpowering your opponents in the most over-the-top ways, so I'm inclined to say that it's okay, especially on higher difficulties where you can effortlessly chain your combos as long as there's enemies to hit. Spirit Charges transform this game from a semi-mindless button masher into an utterly hypnotizing affair. By giving the player the ability to cancel any move at any time as long as it has hit an enemy, the game literally hands you the key to this combat system. Spirit Charges interrupt your character, but not the properties of the attack. If you cancel Nobuyuki Sanada's fourth hyper finisher, you can restart your combo, but the slashes of his blade will still play out, letting you stack more attacks under the giant maelstrom of hits from the hyper finisher. No matter how powerful spirit charges may be, they shape this combat system and give it its unique feel. Combos end when you want them to end, animations finish when you let them finish instead of having no other choice. You are in constant control of the flow of your character, turning the gameplay loop of this title into military grade weaponized catharsis. The 
This was Atmos, and thanks for sticking around.